Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to make a slimline card using Distress Oxide Inks, the Layered Butterflies Thin Cuts, which are part of our You Are Here special, which are available until the end of this month, and stencils. So this is the stencil I'm going to use. It's like a sunburst pattern, but what I'm going to do is layer color over it. So I'm going to show you how to rotate it, blend the colors, and then get hopefully a very cool technique that you'd love to try. You can see here I've got a panel already adhered with painter's tape to my all-purpose mat because I want this panel to remain exactly where it is. This is cut to fit a slimline card at three and a half by eight and a half inches and what I do when I use painter's tape onto our cardstock is I usually either get rid of a bit of the stick by putting it on my hand or I can just run it across my clothes a little bit because when I peel it off I don't want it to take away the cardstock but I will be trimming this panel down a little bit. I'm going to position this on the card base and then I need to adhere it so it doesn't move when I'm doing the blending. So I'm going to use some more painters tape and just put a little bit of it around the edges so that I don't have to worry about it moving at all when I go in with my inking. So I'm going in with Tattered Rose and I'm inking quite lightly with our blending tool. And I'm going to build up layers of colour. So once I've done that, I'm just going to go in again and Tattered Rose is quite a light colour, so you may not see it as well on camera, but I am going a bit darker in this area here where it's radiating out from. So the outer edges of the card will have a lighter colour. In between applications, I'm not going to clean this totally off. I'm just going to wipe it with some paper towel to remove some of the colour and then pick my stencil up and rotate it just a little bit so that the next lot of lines will be running fairly close to the ones that I've just inked. And then I'm going to tape that down again, come in with Pick Raspberry and repeat the process. And once I've done that, I'm going to come in and just press a little bit more firmly and get more concentration of colour down in that area there. I'm going to wipe my stencil again. Now, if I clean this off in between each one, it would take me too long to do the card. And because the ink's just staying on the surface there and these colours all play fairly well together, I don't have to worry about cleaning it properly between each application. So now I'm going to turn it a little bit again. And because this has these gaps in the rays, I am going to move it up and down a little bit so that they don't stay all in the same place across the card. Now it doesn't have to align perfectly because I'm going to keep repeating this process with the colours until I've pretty much covered the panel. So once I've put down this Seedless Preserves colour, I'm going to fast forward through and put this on a speed where you can just watch this all happening, but not necessarily every application. Because I don't think you want to sit there and watch me build up these colours, but I wanted to show you the first three sets. So there we have the first three layers, and then I'm going to speed this up so you can see it all build up as I go along.
So you can see here, I've got the colors all done. There are white spaces, but I'm going to treat that a bit more now to blend this in even more. I don't want to keep going because they get quite condensed in towards this central area here, but I'm going to go in with the ink that is just left on the blending tool and just go in over this area And then if I think this is getting a little bit dry, I'm going to pick this up and then I'm going to dab off because I don't want it to be a full strength application. So I'm putting the tattered rose all over the card base. And then I'm going to go in with pick raspberry and just blend up from that area. And you can see how this is still keeping the radial lines distinctive, but toning down that white area. And then I'll go in with the seedless preserves and put a little bit more pressure on to concentrate this out somewhat. And then I'm going to come back in and blend this out even more. So that's the base of my card panel done. Before I peel this off, I'm going to go in with some water and put in some splattering. So just with my water brush and tapping it off and then I can come in with my paper towel and pick that up to see how I'm going and I might add a little bit more in this area here. Now because this is Distress Oxide ink it does stay quite wet and I want to put some white splatters on here. What I'm going to do is just dry this off a little bit with my heat gun. It will still stay reactive to water but I just want a drier base. This area here is just still a little bit white so I'm just going to come back in with the tattered rose. For the white splatters I'm just going to use some acrylic craft paint. I just picked this up from Kmart for a couple of dollars and normally when I do white splatters I water it down just a little bit, but because this is Distress Oxide ink base, if I water it down too much, then the white is just going to disappear into the color, it will react. So I'm just going to pick it up while it's solid and tap it off. It's a bit harder to get Nice white splatters when you haven't watered it down, but I quite like the effect of just a little bit of white on this card base. It just lifts it just a little bit. When removing the painter's tape, it's always better to pull it back on itself. If you pull it straight up, it can grab onto the paper. See how it's done that a little bit there, but that's okay because I know I'm going to trim this panel down. I'm just gonna set that aside just for a minute and go back to this stencil that we used. And I've got all of this gorgeous ink on here and I don't want to waste it. So I've just got a little cheap spray bottle and I'm going to spray it with water. And I've got some leftover, just white daisy cardstock. I'm not using watercolor paper just for this. And I'm going to press that down, lift up that color I can cut this panel down to use on a scrapbook page or onto another card base. 
and I get this gorgeous reaction. So don't clean everything off straight away. You can put this aside to dry. Here's one that I did earlier. It does flatten out quite a bit. So it won't stay curved like this. And once it's dried a bit, you can put it underneath some books if you want to flatten it out either fur even further. With your stencils, I just wash mine off in water. If I've got something fairly stubborn on there, I will use just some mild dishwashing detergent. So here's my card panel. I love how the colours all blend together so beautifully. I love working with Distress Oxide inks. They're so easy to blend. And the fact that they react to water makes it even cooler. Now this panel is now three and a quarter by eight and a half because I wanted to put, I think I'm going to put black behind it. And then I'm going to bring in the butterflies that I have cut, run through already. This is with the black ore paper, so it's got a little bit of shine to it. I don't know if that's picking up on the camera. And then I've used our silver glitter paper. So these are two of the pieces. I haven't used the solid base because I want the pattern of this to shine through. And I think this will look really good on this black base so i'll stick all of that together and then we'll put on some sequins and some bitty sparkles and the card will be done For the butterfly, I'm just adhering it together with glue dots. And what I quite often do is stretch them out with my piercing tool so they can get down to the finer areas. And I'm only putting the glue dots onto the body part of the butterfly because I want to bend the wings up a bit. He's just going to sit centrally in. And glue dots are a very strong adhesive, so I quite like how they work when you're using elements like this. And I love having the black strips. It just highlights these colors and sets them off beautifully. For the sentiment, I've cut some silver glitter paper and one of my favorite original stamp sets, holiday tags. I think this was when I first started using close to my heart products. I still love that happy birthday. And what I do is I stamp a whole heap of things when I'm doing white embossing and do a whole lot of them in one go and then put them back in the packet so they're ready for me to use. And because I've got silver glitter paper there, I'm going to use glue dots again to adhere this because you need something quite strong if you're adhering things to the top of glitter paper. And now all that's left is to put some sparkles on. I'm going to use some bitty sparkles, loose sequins and some normal sparkles and sprinkle those around. And then I'll be back to show you the completed card. And I've got a couple of others to show you as well that I have done using this same technique, but different colors of Distress Oxide inks. Here's the finished card, all done with some sequins, using a mix of the silver sequins and in the silver sequin packet, there's like a holographic type sequin as well, really picks up on the color and just makes everything sparkle. So that's using these three Distress Oxides here. I've done another butterfly one that might look a little bit dull on camera but when you see it in real life it's very very rich and what i've done with this one is seedless preserves mowed lawn and peacock feathers and that gives a totally different look to this one 
with the pinks and the purples. And just for fun, I've done another one using one of our retired stamp sets, the Punny Pals, and used candied apple, spiced marmalade, and mustard seed. And it's exactly the same technique. And I've brought in some little black dots to highlight and bring the black in with this one. I hope you've enjoyed watching how these all come together. I'll put some still shots up at the end of the video for you to watch. And thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.